just going to hand over to Jan, and uh, this is the time to get your money out. Okay, no, seriously. Um, have you bought any cash? And if you haven't, because I can have one, uh, my glamorous assistant here yeah, will just give you a, a cash to hold. So Giving Sunday happens on the back of uh, Vision Sunday, um, which is just really about like how do we give in order to fulfill the vision um, that we feel that God is, is, um, has for this year for us as a community. So just have a little look at your money for a minute. Hold on to your money. It's like, what does this represent to you? Like, how do you... Um, we all need money to exist. How do you get your money? Do you earn? Do you work? Do you have investments? Do you have a pension? Do you not work? Does your income come from somewhere else? And how do you feel about your financial status at this moment? We're all in seasons, aren't we? And we have different seasons financially. So what does this season look like for you? What can you buy with whatever you've brought with you? What, what does it represent, that resource, that power? Um, and what I felt, actually, as we were worshipping this morning is to start with, I feel that God would say to you, thank you and well done. Diochen Bauer, well done and thank you so much because I feel like what God wants us to know as a community and actually on behalf of the leadership team as well, thank you for giving to the work of God in this place because I feel like God, that's where God starts because that's that heart of God for us. And I feel like God is just saying to us, my heart is glad when you give. And it's important that we start with that place of just knowing that God's heart is, is just glad when we give to him. So we're going to start by praying, because that's just a great place to start. So we just wanted to start by blessing you. So, Father, I just want to say thank you for all that you have given us. And I just bless people now in the name of Jesus to hear afresh from you on the subject of finances. God, would you release truth? God, would you break any strongholds or anything that we've believed that's not of you? And so in the name of Jesus, I break those strongholds. I uh, break the lies that your word would come and release new truth and fresh revelation today. And where anybody has felt controlled by money or been controlled by somebody who has money, Father, we just release them in the name of Jesus. And uh, at the same time, God, I pray that you would release us from our strongholds of self-reliance and from our strongholds of condemnation. And so I just bless you today to hear from God afresh. Can you just stand and stretch your hands out to, uh, to the front here, to, to Jan, as we bless her. Can you all stand with your money and uh, just hold it up in the air? We just want to spiritually to just really give the power of, of money over to you. We lay it at the foot of the cross and uh, and we say we give it to you lord jesus we just empower the, the the spiritual elements of our lives we we can have as many excel sheets and as many uh, banking statements but we just believe in the bank of god this morning and we get we invest in the bank of god we're going to make deposits into the bank of God. And Lord, we're going to give into the bank of God. And we just bless this time. We just thank you for the words that you've given Jan. And we just ask you to bless her and bless us as Lighthouse community. The things that may have happened in the past, we, we put them to one side and we stand here in 2024 and we go, what are you saying to us today, God? What are you saying to us for our future, God? And, and we move forward with you in our finances and in our faith and in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so don't put your money away. So keep hold of it, keep looking at it, keep asking God what that is. So, um, yeah, so this morning, 
What I felt to do was to talk through some principles, some biblical principles about giving. And I just wanted to start by reminding us like that we are all in this great big huge story of God. We're all in that story, that story that starts with creation, that moves into God uh, choosing a nation, a people group for himself, the Israelites that became the Jewish nation, giving them a land to dwell in, giving them a foundation and a covenant relationship with him. And having some principles and some foundations for how he wanted those people to live. And then we move into that story because through Jesus we are, we, we are grafted in, we're part of that family of God. And we in the church today, we're part of this great big story of what God is doing on earth. And so some of what um, these principles started out with that journey of the Israelites with God. And so Starting with that very, very first principles. The first principles, I'm sorry this is very jargony, but I wanted to use this term, this jargon term, but it's a spiritual term and I wanted to use this term. First fruits giving, very jargony. So in the beginning, when God starts to work with his people, the Israelites, he said to them in Leviticus, he said to them, a tenth of the produce of the land whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's, and it is holy. And so what the people would do is they would bring um, a tenth, they would bring the first, actually, of their harvest. So if you were a farmer, you would bring your first bit of um, harvest, your, your first sack of grain. If you were a farmer, you would bring your first lamb of the season, or lambs, depending on how big your flock was, or you would bring your fish. You would literally, quite literally, bring this actual produce into the temple. So you'd arrive on a Saturday, whatever the Jewish Sabbath is, you'd arrive on that day and you'd bring your lamb. And that would fund the priests and the work of God. And it was very visual, wasn't it? You know, the people were dependent on God for the harvest, and when God blessed them with the harvest through their obedience to him, they would bring their produce to God. But for us, I don't think, I'm pretty certain that Alan would not be impressed if you brought his first. Actually, he probably would be quite happy if you brought a lamb. He's happy, he's happy, and we're also happy to receive the lamb, your first lamb. But really, actually for us, we get paid in money, we get paid electronically probably, and so for us it's hard to get that connection between what we do day to day and how we receive income and what we then give to the church it's like a little bit disconnected and it's also easy to feel that we get to choose that we get control and autonomy and it's um it's hard it's easy to fall out of line with this understanding that this that the Jewish people had, that the source of their blessing was from God and that they were instructed to steward it well and to give of their first fruits. So I just want to mention this principle of first fruits again. This was the first of what the people had. And I think that's a really good principle, that we bring the first of what we have to God. And the other bit about the first of what they had they were asked to give the first 10%. So before they thought about their budget for their house or their kids or whatever their budget they needed, the first bit of it went to God. And throughout my life, our lives, I found that really easy because it's a great way to give. And because we've done it all of our lives, so all of our lives, the first particular percentage went straight to God. And if I'm honest, it also Sometimes it feels a bit lazy because the first percentage just goes. It's not mine. It just goes to God and it is for the work of God. And then the rest of it, you're then left thinking, what else do I need to give? What else can I bring to God? But this principle of first fruits is a really important principle. And I also think it's really helpful to give you a place to stand, to give you a place to start, whereby you're looking at what you have and you're giving the first bit of it to God. But before we get hung up on the 10% bit, because we often understand a tithe, so this 
this verse here. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of your produce. And then in Leviticus, it says a tenth of the produce of the land is the Lord's and it's holy. So a lot of Christians give 10% of their income. That's great. I'm not telling you to give 10%. I'm not telling you to give eight. I'm not telling you to give anything. Because what I'm saying is, this is between you and God. Decide what you choose to give. But for those of us who lived all of their Christian lives believing that the Israelites gave 10%, actually they didn't. They gave nearer to 20. They actually gave a 20% tithe um, every three years for the poor in their community. They did free will offerings and other sacrifices. They had a pattern of generosity before God. So in actual fact, it was way more than 10%. And it isn't the percentage that matters. It's the principle of the first bit, thinking to God, what do I need to give? And being consistent with that is the bit that's really helped me. That's just what has helped us. Principle two, um, Arwell is going to come and read to us from Malachi 3, 8 to 10. So um, you might want that in your Bible. A dyn iawn i ddwyn oddi ar y ddiw. Ac eto, da chi'n dwyn oddi arna i. Sut ydyn ni'n dwyn oddi arna ti, meddech chi, drwy gadw'r degymau ar y ffrymau. Da chi'n diodd emelltydd am eich bod chi'n dwyn oddi arna i. Ie, y cwbl ot onoch chi. Dewch ar degwm llawn i'r stordi. Fel fod yna fwyd yn fy nheml. Ie, rhowch fi ar brawf, meddai'r arglwydd, holl bwerus. A chewch weld y byddai yn agor llif ddorau'r nefoedd ac yn tywallt bendydd arnoch chi, fyddwch chi'n bryn o ddim byd. So, if I was to say to you this morning, if you're not giving what God has asked you to give, you're robbing him. And if I was then to say to you, but it's okay because you can test God in this. You might actually be uh, a little bit offended. <laughs> you might be speaking to Alan and Rachel and going, you just need to tone Janet down a bit. <laughs> Dial it down, please. And yet, here is this passage in scripture where God is speaking to the Jewish nation who are not giving and who are not honoring God. And Malachi is saying, will a man rob God? Yes, you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings, you're under a curse, the whole nation, because you're robbing me. And it's like, whoa. I mean, that's like real stuff, isn't it? That's really tough to hear that. Because, you see, the Israelites knew that everything they had came from God anyway. They knew that it all came from God. And yet God is saying to them, but you're robbing me. But it all gets a bit better. <laughs> There's another half of the verse. I just love those buts in the Bible. But then God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing, you will not have room enough for it. So God's blessing was conditional on the Jewish people giving. So you read all of the Moses stuff, read like Joshua, Deuteronomy, and you see God says, if you bless me, if you're obedient, I will bless you. And I just love, I love that. What I love about this, when we look at this from the position of Jesus, when we look at this in the place that we are in now, when we know the grace and the mercy and the favor of God in our lives, but we cannot we cannot miss the fact that there is a flow and there are blessings that flow when we give. And that is really good news. As we give our time and our energy and our talents and our gifts, whatever it ha we have that we have to give, you may not have an income, you may not have any money to give, but you can give in other ways. Those who are not earning an income can give in other ways. But as we give, God promises that he will bless us. And not only does he say, I'll bless you he says test me give it a go give it six months and test God and see what happens see what happens when you live this way but I wanted to be really clear and um, just say that this isn't why we give we don't give to God to force or coerce or control him in order that he might give to us so this little cartoon here just so you know I tithe last week and I haven't received my blessing yet 
this isn't why we do it. This is not some prosperity gospel teaching where it's like, if you give to the church today, you're going to be a double blast. That isn't that. That's like trying to control God. But there is a promise that God will provide. And there is this flow in heaven that as we give, we will be blessed. And it's very countercultural, isn't it? God says, uh, Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. For the measure you use will be measured to you. And that makes me very happy. It makes me happy. It's good news. It's good news. Principle three is the law of reaping and sowing. So it says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. I'm not a gardener, and I'm certainly not a farmer, but I understand that there is a principle. There is a principle that if you want a crop to grow, you have to put the seed in the ground. There's a principle, isn't there, that, that you, if you want to sow stuff, you have to, you want, if you want to reap stuff, you have to sow. That's the principle. And it's a biblical principle as well that as we, as we give, then we will sow. So bringing that down to us here at Lighthouse, the vision of Lighthouse was explained last, last week. It was laid out really clearly. And I guess the question is, what is your part in that? What does that mean for you? Did anything about that vision excite you? Did you like, yes, I am so pleased to be part of that community? Did something align with your spirit for future impact of Capel Galadi and the wider church on Anglesey and beyond? Because to see that sort of harvest, we have to first sow the appropriate seed. We need to be able to resource and give to the church. And this is a message about financial giving, but it might not just be financial giving. So how are you going to sow in? What will you bring to that vision? What is God stirring and calling you to do? It says in Galatians 6 verse 8 that a man reaps what he sows. So the question is, is what are we investing our time and money and energy in? What, is that, what does that investment look like? How are we going to sow into our vision? So I've been, I've been practicing this with Hilly, so we'll see how we get on. So our vision to Dillian Yesi, Adeladi Kumined, and Karuman. I think we just need to learn it. We all need to learn it together so we can all say it together. So this is our vision, and the finances on a very practical level help us to fulfill that vision. Fourth principle. Are you all with me so far? How are you doing? We're all with us. Okay, fourth principle. Heart matters. So this verse in Corinthians starts off with, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generally, generously will also reap generously. And then it says, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. We were discussing this, actually, in our um, leadership meeting on Monday. So I would really encourage you to, like, chew this on, at your, in your small groups, like, this whole subject, because we all landed in slightly different places. We were broadly in agreement. Actually, we were 99% in agreement. But we had a really good conversation about cheerful giving. And somebody said, you know, I would rather people give... 20 pounds with a cheerful heart than 200 with a grudging heart. I mean, personally, I'd rather have you 200, but I think <laughs> that God says that he loves a cheerful giver. So actually, the principle is that God loves it when you are cheerful. And that's our instruction, isn't it? Each person decides what they have in their heart to give. We are not a church that's about control. We are a church, we're a leadership, and we're saying to you, ask God what he intends for you to give. Our friend Wesin says this, he says that tithing is not a percentage, it's a posture of the heart. And that's how, why we prayed the way we did this morning, because we've all heard things that probably haven't been very helpful. We all come from different places, we're all in different places, and yet really, what God wants is our hearts to be right before him. And that 
as Leslie said, is a journey, a journey of trusting God, a journey of holding on to what we have lightly, to be asking God what he wants us to give. It's like, what are we trusting in? Because our heart is, it's about what are we trusting in? It says in 1 Timothy 6, that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The love of money. It doesn't say money is evil, because in actual fact, wealth creation is a gift that some people have. Good stewardship, wise investment, budgeting, making the most of your money, and enjoying your money. You don't need to be guilty if you go on holiday. Enjoying your money is a God-given gift, but it is about our hearts, isn't it? It is about our hearts before God and giving because we know that he is trustworthy, because we know that he, we can trust ourselves and our finances to God, because he is the God that provides. So the last point is about supernatural provision. So there's a story in 1 Kings 17 that's well worth a look at, and it's Elijah and a widow. And there is a drought in the land and this this widow offers Elijah hospitality and he says to her can you make me some food please and she says well I I don't have anything left I've literally got enough oil and flour to bake one last time and he said to her we'll bake anyway because it got it won't run out God will cause the provision not to run out so she does she uses the last of her oil and her flour every single day <laughs> Every single day is the last of the oil and the flour. And every single day, she's able to provide food because there's a supernatural provision. God multiplies it. God blesses it. And I feel like there are times, probably we should always, always live like this, but there are in particular times when we need the supernatural provision of God financially. And we need to create space for that supernatural provision because this is not about us and God doing stuff for God. It's about us and God in partnership with God, and he is a miracle-working God. And I wanted to be really clear that for some people, they may be in difficult circumstances, that we are in a cost-of-living crisis, that sometimes things are difficult for people. And just to say, we are here, we are a community. If you are experiencing debt, I'm not just talking about the debt of your mortgage. If you're experiencing significant debt, if you're worried or concerned about your financial situation, we are here for you. There are things to help you, and we are here to for you, to come alongside you, to support you. So please talk to us if that's you, or you know somebody for whom that's a reality for. But God is, God is the God of supernatural provision. Jehovah Jireh, I will provide. And... As a community, you will have read the information that Alan sent out and you will have read and heard that there is a shortfall in our budget this year. We've called it a faith gap. So you might have blinked and missed that little shortfall world word. It is a shortfall. There is not enough in our budget projected for this year. And we call in that a faith gap because we believe in God's provision. We believe that God will provide. And we also believe that the right thing to do is say, this is where we're at as a community. Is there something that you want to do to address that? Is God prompting you to um, be generous and obedient and help plug that gap? So our five principles, first fruit giving, blessing flowing as we give we sow that we can reap we reap we give with a heart full of trust and love towards God and he says thank you and we make room in our lives for the supernatural giving the supernatural provision from God I'm going to finish with a verse and hand over to my very practical husband <laughs> actually this is this is my prayer and it's from 2 Corinthians 8 and my prayer is that we would excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love that, God, you have given us, and that we would excel in this grace of giving. God, I pray that we would excel in this grace of giving. Amen. So I'm just really going to sum up everything and just talk about some practicalities. So this has all been emailed out to you. This is just really a summation for the next year, 
if we uh, carry on how we are, we have an expected income of 58, um, but we're planning to spend 76. So there's a there's a there's a a faith gap that uh, that we'd like to uh, fill. But I like a God that fills to overflowing. So as we keep getting filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, the Holy Spirit overflows, like Rachel beautifully put about the the uh, the oil that was spilled over Jesus' feet, kept flowing. And so uh, the, the, this can be the same for our finances. We may have a shortfall, but we could overflow our shortfall. There are different ways that, that we can give. You just go to the next slide. Our estimated income is split this way. From, from a Sunday offering, it's really 1%. This isn't 1% of the congregation. Over 80% is regular online giving. That's not 85% of our family. That's the 85% of the actual income. Okay, there's a big difference there. Okay. Um, and then obviously our wonderful, whatever you think about our government, there is an opportunity for, if you are a gift aid person, for, for that to become income as well. And this is how we estimate the costs uh, for, for us over the next year. So we like to give, we like to outreach, we like to um, do what our mission statement says. So there are different ways that we, ca we can give. Uh, uh, and what we'd love is if you respond and, and you're going to uh, increase your standing order or you're going to set up a new standing order, um, please send an email to the giving at Capoglady, because uh, that will just tell us what sort of decisions you've been making. Um, talk to the leadership team. It's a safe place, okay? So if you're unsure about what to give, uh, what sort of proportion, what you feel on your heart, please, there are people around that you can trust, and um, we ca you can talk to any of the five leaders uh, who will be happy to talk to you. Please ensure you're happy... Please ensure you don't go into debt through your giving. Talk to your leaders if you have any uh, questions. This is brilliant. Who knows what that is? Some people know who that is. That is what's on the Capital Lady website. And it's brilliant for a couple of reasons. You can put a one-off payment, or if you click on that little arrow, it can go to weekly, or a certain day of the month, and you can change it for regular giving as well. You can also tick a box and you do the gift aid. You just put all your details in, and the whole system is set up for you to do a one-off or a regular giving. As I would like to point out, this is something I do as the Bradbury Finance. What we do is first fruits, we believe as first fruits. So Stockport Council paid on the 15th. On the 15th, our standing order goes out. So I don't even think about it in our budget in a certain way. It's almost like, you know, we, we pay tax and then we get the rest of the money back. We have it, it comes into the account. And I know some people, I mean, I, I'm an ex-banker. And um, so I used to have water, gas, council tax, everything going out on the 15th. 15th was our day. <laughs> so I would know that it would like it come in, it would go out, and the rest of it is, to, it is for the rest of the uh, month. And then the giving to other charities and doing whatever else that, that we do. So as a first fruit, it's quite a good idea to do it if you have a regular day, a pension day, a benefits day, whatever your income is. But please, please know our heart here. The last thing I actually want to say is actually quite a serious thing. Vision Sunday yesterday, last week, the world would say to a couple, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a government job and you've got a government pension, that's, that's good, that's, that's solid. If you've, if, you, if you've got real expertise as a teacher uh, and... Um, Five or six years ago, you decide to move to an island and sit at a kitchen table, not knowing what a church would look like, 
and having the amazing support of your parents sat on that table as well. That was a seed that fell onto good soil. Now take it five or six years ahead and this, this person who has a government job and the world would say safety, security, regular income and you hand your notice in and you say, I believe God is gonna, has got a calling on my life and on our lives as a family. We're loving bringing up our children but we believe in a God that overfills the gap. And this is where Capel Galadi as a family comes in. Alan and Rachel wouldn't stand up here and self-profess. But I will do it on their behalf. And I will say to you as church family, not just talking about your money, pray for this family that are leading you. Give time to this family that are leading you. Take them out for a meal. Have a cup of coffee with them. Tell them the love. Tell them thank you for what you do. And thank you for following your heart and your vision. Because the world would say to them, what a stupid decision. The world would say to, to, to them, what you actually should do, you should earn income, you should have your holidays planned, do everything else, and the church at the end of it just get the bits just gets the token change in the collection tray at the end of the day. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I've got Russell around my pockets. And uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give that. And here's, here's a family that have decided to seek God and believe in God. And God has come and met them where they are and is taking them on a journey. And we're a family that want to support them on that journey. So please pray for them. Worship with them and and tithe and look at your giving and as i say this is a safe place and we just want to love and grow together as couple galady oh lord we just give you this morning we just praise you and thank you for this wonderful morning and we lay down our wallets this sunday and we say yippee we open our purses this morning and we say yippee we thank you, Lord, that you are taking us on a journey as a church. May, uh, may we be blessed with overflowing in our prayer time, in our worship time, in our finance time, in our family time as Capel Galady. And Lord, especially, we just want to bless Alan and Rachel as they step into this vision. And, uh, and we journey with them. We thank you for them laying down their fleeces uh, and saying, this is our vision, this is the way we want Capel Galady to go. And we are prepared to do this. We are prepared to have this faith gap. And I just want to, I just want to, I just want to really proclaim that this gap is no gap whatsoever. And it's already gone. And we ask you to overflow the finance. We just we banish every Excel sheet that would limit us. We banish every budget that would put chains around us and think that we cannot do things. And we walk in the supernatural power of Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. And we walk in our lives and just touch our hearts. Let us have open and honest conversations with each other and through each other. And just, we just bless this week. We just uh, ask you to uh, bless this time. We just ask you to bless our hearts. And as we leave from today, may our hearts be renewed and may, may us have amazing opportunities to sow seed and to reap a harvest of souls and a, and a harvest of opportunities. So we just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen.